you know, the reason why I thought Iski was the way he was is because of him probably being bullied in his childhood, you know, and no one would take his side, not even teachers, not even his parents, and therefore he felt insecure about everyone around him would just not take his side of what it means to be true justice, and because of that, he felt so inferior to himself. And then he goes to his new world where he like, this is my second chance to make things right. Where the bullies won't win. The bad guys won't have the advantage. And I'm like, okay, that made great sense. But instead, it is because he's just insecure. I'm like, okay, I get it. You had high expectations in yourself. Because you were good around the people you were with at the time when you were younger. But then when you got older you realize there's much bigger fish in that pond now, you know. And, and this is a story I've seen a lot, especially in my childhood, when it comes to these kind of characters, where they grow up and they're very, as kids, and they're very good at whatever it is. They seem to be the best. Everyone likes them, everyone talks about them. I'm like, well, you're amazing. You can do anything. And apparently in this world, they have superpowers. They have superpowers in his world. So he kind of went through the world with, like, My Hero Academia or something. I wish we could have seen those superpowers or wherever it was. It would have been nice, but whatever. <laughs> and now it was... And it was he goes to new school. He goes to new school, you know, middle school. He realizes things aren't the way they supposed to be, in a way. He was not being bullied. He's not being made fun of. He's just... He's just there being inferior. You know, he's just feeling inferior to himself. In a way. Everything is happening towards him. And it's... I understand. But he could have just tried harder. He could have tried harder. Instead of just believing that everything he was told was a lie. You know, he didn't need that, you know, the entire time I thought I was going to be leading up him to being, you know, bullied and stuff, and it would make more sense that way, it would hit the pressure, I feel like the world's just against him, but more of anything, he just refused to do better, you know, his ideal of justice, which even you know, what his ideal justice was, what is that anyways? And why is it only his has to be the one that's right compared to everybody else, you know? Everyone has an idea of justice, but each one can have similarities, you know, to a point where you can find some standing ground and just agree, you know, or agree to disagree, you know? It's not completely black and white as this guy thinks it is. He grew up with this immature mindset. And it sucks for his mom to be, like, I know what's going on with his mom. Was his mom crying because he made level E when he went to middle school? And she just kind of like, I don't know, help him do better? The train? Anything. They didn't do it. He just refused his situation. It's like they were raised to just be given things that they expect. And then once when they get something they can't expect, they just refuse it instead of working with it. Or making some leeway out of it. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now, man? Iski, if all the things, Ren never really opened up to people. Motiyasu just followed what anyone told him to do. You know, and not Fumi just blindly trusted people. And each one has the reasons of doing what they did. But you, Iski, yours is the worst. You just didn't even try. And all just because someone of us decided to listen to what you had to say, you believed them, whether they were good or not, despite everything. And yes, I know Maya has her thing. Like, what's going on with her? Why is she so, like, going person to person, and she just breaks them at the end? Like, right after they use the curse power, the curse series, she leaves them. You know, she did... With Maltiatsu, she did it with Ren, and now she did it with Iski. But back on Iski, man. I'm not done with this boy. I'm not done. <laughs> no. He is just sad. It's kind of like Rudy's thing. It really is like Rudy's thing. 
he did not try to improve. He did not try to make his life better. He wallowed in his own pity. Didn't open up to anybody. Yeah, he kept going to school on like Rudy is. He didn't come a total scumbag, but now he's in this new world. And it's still a second chance. And I guess it's realistic that he has not yet learned his lesson. That's why he is easily fooled. And I'm like, okay, okay, that makes sense. It really does. Now, with that being said, he can still learn from this, you know, that, that everyone's just as incorrect, you know. You can do good things, but you got to think things through. You don't just go in, destroy, kill an evil leader from a village, then leave. That's not how it works, you know. If someone needs to replace that leader, there needs to be someone to have management over that that area that you, you know, you redeemed in a way. You need to find some way to make things better. He's going to kill. Okay, now what? Then again, it's kind of the village's fault for not thinking of someone else to be leader and not know how to run the place by themselves. Like, you want to be rid of this. I, I'm talking about season one, where how he did this thing where now Fumi had to clean up his mess because he took, killed the leader, but he didn't replace him. And be honest, it shouldn't have been his responsibility, but the village should have known how to take care of itself. And as it was under oppression, where it didn't know how to take care of itself, but only to serve the Lord himself. That could also be a possibility. But yeah, there's that. So his cursor gave him wings and just corrupted him to the point he couldn't see. Even brainwashing. This dude had to go through brainwashing. Just to try to get people on his side. Because he could not take it. He could not stand it. He could not stand that pe people disagreed with him. You know, that no one would be on his side. Just because no one's on your side doesn't mean they're against you. It's just, they probably just don't believe in what you believe in right now. You're probably acting crazy. Or they might understand what you're doing, but they just don't feel like they should be over there right now. They have this to do. It's... Possibilities are endless here. Now, let's talk about Raisha. Raisha, man. Coming in to shine. You know, they ain't make her OP or very skillful. She's still in training, but she has improved a lot from last time. You know, using this Muso Hangin style. You know, and it's great that we got to see the Muso Hangin style besides from the old granny. We get to see it from her as well and the results, you know, from, from this... From the from the sun, star, moon techniques, the stances, how she uses it, and even the point where she has this transparent power. Like, what, what is this transparent power? Where does she get it from? And he says, the bow has chosen me to help you. She, I guess that's how she stands it, I believe. And it's like, no one knows where this power came from, not even the queen. Oh, dude, what a mystery. Okay, we got another thing to solve. And it's like, wow. So she's going to have a big role to play later on, probably, or his connection to Ethki himself. It could be what happens if a hero doesn't become the hero anymore of their weapon. Does it change over to somebody else, or does it change completely to a different kind of weapon? I don't know. But I'm just, you know throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Now, what mine did is the obvious. You know, like I said before, she gathers the weak spot, makes them feel secure, and then when they are full of confidence, ready to meet Nafumi and just boast him out, she jets. She just jets. She did it again. And like I said from last reviews, why? Why is she doing this? What is the point of all this? You know, for her going to each hero, making them have a sense of security around her, and then she betrays them at their lowest point, and they summon the curse series, and she skadoodles away. Like, what is she after? What is she up to? Why is she giving each hero the curse series for? Something is going on with this chick. There's no way when the world's in danger, she's helping it. She's delaying its rescue. You know, that's what it feels like. 
she is up to something. The question is what it is, and it can't be good. In this station, she felt like a completely cartoon Saturday cartoon morning villain in the first season, and she did, did some underhand stuff. But still, once when they got her on trial and convicted her, she became less irrelevant, especially in season two. But now we're here in season three, and it seems like she's back to something a bit more devious, but she's thinking ahead this time. What she's doing? Remember, this chick is not afraid to try to kill her own sister to get ahead of power. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> so she's crazy. But yeah. One more episode left, and then we'll see what happens. I highly doubt it will fight the Phoenix on this episode. Might really something to do with Eastkey, who knows. But with that being said, that's where I'll leave this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been background on Mad Signing out.